three of Roni's four saves have come. Three of Roni's four saves have come over his last four outings, so he has been an ace in the bullpen for the Syracuse Mets, and he starts Cullen Large out with a strike. Large is switch hitter, bats from the left-hand side. Here comes the 0-1, swing and a miss for strike two on a 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Mets two, Bisons one. It's the top of the seventh inning. Second game of a doubleheader here this evening at NBT Bank Stadium. Syracuse won the first game four to three. It's another one-run contest, and the pitch is grounded foul first base side. Holding the count to nothing in two. Appreciate everyone who's tuned in, whether you're at the ballpark. I know I ran into a couple of fans in between games that listen. Or whether you're at home, out for a walk, out for a run, or maybe in your car, whether it's running errands, or maybe driving home from the ball game if you have some young kids. No balls and two strikes here on Cullen Large, and the 0-2 misses outside for ball one. We do always appreciate the earlier starts, the 6.35 first pitches normally, but also the double headers at 4.05. Makes for a bit of an earlier evening than normal. One and two on Large. It's the top of the seventh inning. Again, equivalent to the ninth inning. Double headers in the minor leagues and the last two seasons now in the major leagues are two seven-inning games, not two nine-inning games. So this is the final inning. That's in front, two to one. Here comes the one-two. Swing and a miss. Strike three goes upstairs at 95. As Roney blows by large for the first out of the frame. What's really helped Roney turn his season around, Michael, is he's throwing strikes right there. He went right after Large, struck him out on four pitches, and then that 95-mile-an-hour rising fastball to get him. Yeah, he's only allowed two walks in his last four outings, and those both came against Worcester in his last time out. First pitch here to Kellen Deglins over the plate for strike one. And that was in game two of the doubleheader against the Worcester Red Sox last Friday. No balls and a strike on Deglin. Here comes the pitch, and that misses outside for ball one. Syracuse has won four doubleheader games in a row. They won the second game of a doubleheader against Scranton Wilkesbury, swept a doubleheader against Worcester, and they won the first game of tonight's doubleheader. Here comes the 1 1. Deglin swings and tips this into the and out of Martin Cervenka's mitt, strike two. Syracuse entering today 9-7 and seven in doubleheaders. The win today in game one, so now they're 10-7 and seven in doubleheaders this season. Beginning of the season, the Mets coaching staff thought that this was a team made up to be really good in doubleheaders. 1-2. Swing and a miss. Off speed. Pulls the curtain down. Kellen Deglin strikes out. Off speed from Roney. And now there are two outs here at the top of the seventh. Mets one out away from sweeping a doubleheader against the team that is leading the division right now. Buffalo has the league's best hitting in terms of batting average, the league's best pitching staff in terms of earned run average. Syracuse an out away from sweeping a doubleheader. Here is Logan Warmoth for the first pitch. That's a called strike at 94 over the outside corner, and the count's nothing in one. Warmoth has walked and struck out today. Mets trailed 1-0 after one. Scored a run in the second inning because of two defensive errors on a steal. Here comes the 0-1. That is a called strike on the outside corner. Belt high for strike two. Syracuse took the lead in the bottom of the sixth inning on a Josh Reddick RBI single after Mason Williams led off of the double. Syracuse 2, Buffalo 1. Final inning. Two outs. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Roney does it again. His fifth save of the season. And it's seven in a row for the Syracuse Mets. It's another close contest. A one-run game. But Syracuse on the right end of both of them today. Syracuse wins 4-3 in 